Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we are very thankful for your grace and mercy in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us safely under your wings. We ask you to bless us, and may we bless you and glorify your name always in our lives. May we conduct ourselves Christ like in Jesus' name. Amen. 102, 102. He hideth my soul. Don't spend.
I'm waiting for you to say something funny. Seems to be a little early today. You're here, that's what's important. Yes, John. John would have had Sunday school if he had three different things. That's it would have been somebody could have done something. I'd have done. John would have done. John takes care of me, so I tell you what, I walk in here today. I used to have to rush around. You might have seen me rush around. Yes. Oh, and that was all I got to do was show up. And it's all laid out there. They just plug the little thing in. I, I don't even remember doing anything with John. I forgot this. John handed it to me as a He's even beating us up the door and shaking my hand. No, there's only one. Okay. That said, he was deeper than he was. Amen. Amen. We are in uh, our unit on Jesus Christ, uh, our peace, our peace. Last week, and that's where we'll go very brief review. Last week, we really we talked about Paul, Saul, Paul, Paul. Um, knowing that Jesus is our peace, and that there is so many dimensions to this peace. Uh, the first thing that we've looked at way back, not last week. Before that, that um, Jesus is our peace because he tore down the middle wall of partition between us. And we, we looked at that. There are three things that we looked at between the Jew and the Gentile. That wall was removed in with the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Gentiles also part of that new thing, the church. Brand new thing. It never been, it was a mystery in, in and tore down that wall uh, uh, partition between himself and the Jews, which we call that. That's, remember that Torah from the top to the bottom at the death of Jesus, signifying that the way was made open to all who believe. The way is made open. We didn't have to just do like the Jews one time a year, just the high priest goes in so to meet with God. But we can meet with God. Never, so we should go boldly into his presence because he died for that. One of the reasons that he died for that. And then um, that the real wall was broken down to by Jesus, our peace, which is sin. That, that, that became a barrier that is a barrier to our salvation. It's a barrier to our fellowship, our communion with God. Everyone, Jew and Gentile alike, in Jesus, our peace, uh, dealt with that also. So it, basically, it's in salvation. So we have peace with God through Jesus Christ our Lord. We have peace with God through Jesus Christ our Lord. But we have the peace of God, and that, that's, the, that's a multidimensional thing. First of all, you have to have the peace with God, or the rest you can't get. So the peace of God is what comes upon us um, in many fashions, in many ways, and we're going to touch on some of the Last week we looked at um, Paul's life after he was wonderfully saved on the road to Damascus. We looked at that, and we looked at this first. And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me, they are saying that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide thee. He's speaking there to the Ephesian elders. He's not in Ephesus anymore. He's on his way back to Jerusalem. And you see that there's some danger 
You can see what it says there. There's danger there. And, and, but he says, I'm bound in the spirit. That's an interesting uh, way to say it because Jesus, we'll, we'll see later, that Jesus says something very, very similar to that. that that's not a bad thing, bound in the spirit. In other words, uh, there's nothing else I can do. I just simply, I must go back to Jerusalem. Um, bound in the spirit. Um, and then we see here the next verse. But none of these things, the afflictions and all those things that await him, none of, but none of these things move me, neither can I my life dear unto me, unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify of the gospel and the grace of God. And so we see, the, if we put the whole thing together very briefly put, um, that this is talking about peace in his lifetime because of what? His obedience to the Lord after his salvation. Because we see that Paul was called to do certain things and he told that told us that Acts 9, we've been studying Wednesday evening, then Acts 22, that's 20, then Acts 22, and then Acts 26. He talks about what, what God told him after salvation, that all the things he must suffer for him, and that he would speak to kings and Gentiles and all people, that, that he would take the gospel to all of them, and it would cost him. But look at what he says, finish with joy. In other words, why is he bound in the spirit? That, that there was one thing holding on to Paul, and that is... I must please my Lord. Now listen, he had peace only when he did that. Now think about it. This is not for, he's dead. This is for us. Peace of God, not peace. We have peace with God, Lord, we say the peace of God entered into Saul and Paul when he was doing the will of God in his life. The peace of that, that God sins, it's, it, it's in here, it's inside, and the peace is this, I'm, I'm doing what pleases my Lord. You may not have that uh, consciously, it may not be a thought, but it should be, it can be, but there's going to be some pleasure, some joy inside of you when you go on about your life, living it and growing and doing it. And adding to the things you're doing. And why? You're showing your love. You're saving. You're doing what? Look, we're going to be with him forever. And there should be some real pleasure, joy, happiness over doing those things. Um, and summarize that peace. Peace that would come. And then still with Saul, we see this. Wherefore I take the record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Look, he's going, he knows not where. I don't care about my life. They may kill me. I don't care. Don't hold my life that dear. I just want to please my Lord. I want to finish what he gave me to do. And then he adds this. This is not added because this finishes the thought. That's his, there's his ministry. There's his ministry right there in that, in that verse again that um, I'm sure from the blood of all, in other words, every single person I ran across, I told the gospel to. Now, now that, was, that was his ministry, and surely we have some of that ministry today. We're saved, and we have a great commission ourselves. We're not solved, but we are saved, a child of God, and ought to act like it. The song saying talk a little bit about that. But I'll go just saying. So Saul, Paul chose to finish his course that was given to him by God. Above his very life, he chose to finish that course. He perfectly finished his course at the course at Ephesus, but it must go on. Uh, there were others that he needed to witness to. He must go on. He taught all that he knew about God. And we see here at the end of his life, 
We finished up with Saul, Paul with this. He, he's writing to Timothy. He's, he's going to be martyred within just days of this. He says to Timothy, For I am now ready to be offered, and in the time my departure is at hand, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Now look at there. We're, we're not Paul, but take a look at there. I finished my, my course. I, I kept the faith. And that's for us too, right? I kept the faith. What does that mean? I didn't walk away, back away from what the Lord delivered from me, to me, and for me. The salvation and the new life. Are you not born again? Right. And there's, there's a newness there. Um, and we see here, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, not to be only. There you go. It's all in the love is appearing. Um, and again, that's that's for Paul, too. And look, he's, he's not. Uh, Talking about, you know, do it till you die. He's saying, do it till he appears. Should tell us the, the hope of these early church people that they were looking for the Lord to come back. To come back. The imminent return of our Lord. Imminent means unexpected. You cannot plan for it, so be ready. So be ready. Love is appearing when we look for his period, right? With with fondness, hey, I'm ready. You know, in bad times, a lot of people are ready in bad times, aren't they? But even so, come more Jesus, right? it says in Revelation. Okay, so now that was in Paul as an example, but we're studying Jesus, and I know that the work done in Paul's life is not of Paul. That was all of the Holy Spirit of God. That was all the Spirit of God. But Paul had to do. He had to be willing. How can you tell somebody's willing? Well, they do. They do what they're supposed to do. They're willing to do it. Um, God can have all sorts of expectations. Do do we always fulfill God's expectations? Mm -hmm. No. That's why we come to church and study and pray and plead and, and sometimes have to um, have great sorrow over what we haven't done in our lives. And time has passed and we're saying, I don't have any more time to mm -hmm. do if you're breathing, you still have time. So we should be able to do that. We, we want to look at the perfect example of peace, which is our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, in Ephesians, he is called our peace. In Isaiah, he's called the Prince of Peace, right? We, we remember this verse, right? For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. And then we see the Prince of Peace. It is said that all of those other titles there are all related to that last one. Prince of Peace. It almost summarizes them. We won't go into that kind of detail, but we're going to look some at that title of uh, Prince of Peace. And uh, this name, Prince of Peace, the name is the very heart of Christ's work, the very heart of his work. Here, here's the whole deal. Jesus came and we have already said this in Ephesians. He brought peace to your heart. You're, we are no longer enemies of our God. Peace came in Jesus Christ. Now, is peace in the world? No. We're talking about the individuals here. One day, there will be perfect peace. We might get to that today. Briefly, just at least a verse. But the peace that Jesus Christ brought was not as the world gives, give I unto you. He gave us his peace, and the peace is, is this. Our creator God, our savior God, and we are at, if we are in accord. We are in accord. We're, we're okay. We're all right now. We're not at 
We're not enemies any longer. We are not enemies with God's ways uh, because of sin. Because of sin. Um, and sin is against our Lord. So the very heart of Christ's work is this particular uh, Prince of Peace. Through his work on the cross, we've been reconciled. It means thoroughly changed into that which pleases God. Matt talked about this month, month and a half ago. I've talked about it earlier, uh, years ago, uh, some sort of. Reconciled is what happened to you and I when we got saved. We are reconciled to God. God is not reconciled because of me. He changed. God did not change in his attitude toward us. We changed. And therefore, he approves. You understand? How, how did we change into something that God approves of? What happened? He believed on the Son. And what happened? And what, what, is, what had to happen for us to please God? What happened to us that causes us to not please God? That will give us the answer. Sin. Did I hear that? Sin. So what happened for us to be changed into something that God can be pleased with now. The repentance. And what else? What, what did we owe God for? Same word. Sin. So what did Jesus do on the cross? Paid it all. Right? And when we accept that, when we accept that for ourselves, individual. And you can't accept for anybody else, just for ourselves. When you accept by faith that what Jesus did is because you sin and you owe, and the, and, and the wages of your sin is death and hell. There's a second death for those that are unrepentant and unsaved. But when, when you believe what God did what Jesus, through Jesus Christ, His Son, your sins come under His blood personally. In other words, you appropriate what Jesus did for you on the cross, what he did for all mankind on the cross. For God so loved the world. He did it for all mankind, but only those who believe by faith get saved. Right? It's open for everybody. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But when you accept it for you, because you know you've sinned, and you know there's no way out because you have sinned, there's only death and hell awaits you because you've sinned. But Jesus paid, paid it all. All right. Now, when we accept that, there is no longer anything separating us from God the Father. Right. There's no more veil. There's no nothing. There's no separation because now we can walk into His presence. We've been changed into something. He can have a relationship with again. Think about Adam pre-sin. Relationship. Wonderful relationship. That relationship has never been, never been duplicated. But what the Lord has done is taken away through Jesus, uh, death on the cross, his shed blood instead of our shed blood, right? Instead of our death in hell. He took that and, and, and it we're cleansed and we are fit to be in his presence and we're told go into his presence be bold go into his presence with thanksgiving he says right because you can do it and our relationship is restored perfectly like with Adam no but it can be and guess what it will be when when will it be perfectly restored? When we're with it, right? Right? I mean, we're perfectly saved. I'm talking about relationships because we still do what day by day? We still sin because of this. But, uh, Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? And he says, I thank God because there will be a delivery from this body of death. It's a sinful body, right? 
And we know that one day we'll get another one that's not sinful, another body that'll be perfect. That relationship and communion with the Lord perfectly restored. And we see that um, that's the reconciliation. We're reconciled to God by what his son did. Reconciled, changed into something, someone that God approves of. We are born into his family. That's how close we are to him. That's close. Once a sinner, and then in an instant we, we become a child of God based on Jesus, what he did, and our faith that what he did is for ourselves. Thoroughly changed. Thoroughly changed. Listen, we're talking about peace. There's some peace there in that reconciliation. I told you many facets. There's a lot of stuff to this um, that, that we can go over. Um, think about this. There should be peace in our inner nature. What peace do you find now as a child of God that you did not have before salvation? What's the peace that you have? What are you at peace with? You're at peace with God, but what else are you at peace with? Your salvation, yourself. If God's taking care of all my sin, that, that what I've done is no longer, it's, it's not up there anymore. Remember, he'll never bring the, our sin up. Right? It, it's, it, it's tossed into the sea of uh, forgetfulness or whatever that's called in Scripture. And it, it's as far as the east is from the west, man. It's talked about that. The east and the west never meet, right? Right? It, I mean, it's endless, his forgiveness. So there should be an inner peace about that. Right? You remember the verse that says, I know whom I have believed in. And it's in a song. I am persuaded he's able. He, that which I have committed unto him. What did you commit? Your very soul. Right? That persuasion is an inner peace. In other words, for you it's settled. I know where I'm going. Is that arrogance? No. It's assurance. I know where I'm going because I believe God. I don't believe man. I believe God. I believe this is his word. That's what his word says. That's our stance. There's a lot of attacks in the Bible. Always has been. But we believe the Bible. So there's a peace in our inner nature. There's a peace in the storms of life. What's a storm of life? Sin can be what else? Come on, you're living a life. What's a storm in your life? Don't talk about all this rain we have. Health. Storm. What? Health. Illness. Illness? Al's home to a storm. What else? Come on, folks. What are things you Financial. Face? Financial can be a absolutely. Yes? You've lived long enough, you've gone through storms of, of deaths in your family, loved ones, storms of children that didn't turn out like you'd like, and storms of famine. There's many storms of our, our church being almost torn apart. That's a storm. And it wasn't just with Justin. Some of you have been long enough to remember. Another young man that was here that, that tore us up. Glad he's gone. And I pray that he's repentant and that, that church he leaves is getting the word of God. That's all you can do, right? We can't condemn him. We've sinned too. Yes. It's God that forgives. So we ask for that. There's storm, but there's peace there. Do you remember who was that lady that I used to call Frederick? Yes. yes. Now, I'm going to tell you something. She found some peace there as she lived. Didn't she? Yes, she did. And, and that, that's not a bad deal. That's not a bad deal. Looking at your end and doctors, endless, always. Can't do this, can't do that. If I'm just saying, you know something? I'm not doing that anymore. And she came back here and she stayed here and she sang and she was in the choir and she had that smile on her face and she 
Yes? Yeah. That's peace about something because she knew there's something better awaiting me. I don't need this. And that was her choice. What a wonderful thing to observe her in our lives. But that's inner peace in a storm. It's a storm. Instead of being disheartened and shriveled up and get mad and wow, he doesn't love me, it's this. Lord, I know you know what's going on. Fix me if you want to. If not, take me on home. I mean, I'm just, I'm just making all that up. But it's a true statement. A true statement. There are storms. There are storms in our life. There are things that you cannot fix. We should take them to the Lord, knowing that He knows about it. That's peace, isn't it? And the Lord knows what's going on in my life, but I want to talk to Him about it. Why? Why? He says to. Him. Right. And there's peace there too. There's peace in submitting to him. That's obedience, right? Peace in not choosing what you want, what I want. Peace in saying this is what the Lord did and it's good enough for me. There's peace in that. Um, there's peace in our fellowship with God. There's peace of having self-control that you didn't used to have maybe. There's peace of forgiveness. There's peace as you see the sanctification or the holiness growing in your life where the things that you used to still dip and dabble in that you shouldn't have, you're not doing that anymore. You're, you're becoming holy. You're apart from that world more and more. Is it? Listen, there should be peace in that. Why? Because God says that's the point he saved you for. We'll be conformed to the image of his dear son. Mm-hmm. So there should be peace when you see it in your life. There should be peace. All of these things require some meditation on godly things. Yes? Mm-hmm. We go through life, we don't even give him thanks for all the things he does because we don't even know what he's doing. We don't have, have any kind of list. Mm-hmm. But there should be a big long list. Start to meditate on your life now as opposed to what it could be and comparing it with those who don't know him and saying, oh my Lord, you've saved me from those. I thank you and I praise you. Yes, praise should be normal. Um, there is so much that's just settled in the life of a Christian. And that's peace. It's not up in the air anymore. There's just peace. I'm glad you have peace that you come to a church that uses the Bible. That's the technical should be peace about that, right? There should be peace about that because, you know, the Lord has, has worked that out. The Lord has worked that out. Listen to the people. Now we're talking about Jesus. We just talked about him as Prince of Peace. In all, in all Jesus taught, in all that Jesus taught and lived, not just with his mouth now, in all that he taught and lived, we see peace with the Father. So Jesus teaches peace. And we're going to get to a couple of those verses. We're going to get a couple of verses that show that Paul was a lot like Jesus and he is being bound in the Spirit. Because so was Jesus. Bound in a good way. Bound in the Spirit. But so we'll see that. In all that Jesus taught and lived, we see the peace with the Father and the way to real peace for mankind. So let's go and we'll see the first thing here. This is Jesus. Remember, uh, maybe a year ago we talked about Jesus as being the, the good shepherd. Remember that? In, in, it's in John 10, and we spent several weeks on that because he's also the door. Right? And we saw that it's that idea of Good Shepherd it goes way back in the Old Testament. We looked at several verses there. But look at what Jesus said. Just some of what he says in John 10. He says, As my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Do you see any peace there? Because we're the sheep. You know that, right? We're the sheep. Jesus is the shepherd. 
Do you see any peace there without me even going through what I've got written down? Look, look at the verses. Any peace there? Where's some peace? Somebody tell me, what do you read the peaceful in your mind? Because it's referring to you and to me. There is security. Never perish. What else? He knows us. Eternal life. I give it to them eternal life. My sheep have eternal life. I gave it to them. What else? John says something. What did you say, John? He said he knows us by name. I love it. Yes. He knows you by name. You say, well, then of course he does. But listen to me. Why do we act like he doesn't then? And you say, well, I don't act that way. You don't. He knows every one of our thoughts before every word before it comes out of our mouth. Read the first few verses of Psalm 139. He knows us thoroughly. He's before us, beside us, around us. He knows our thoughts, our minds, no matter where we go. He's already there. He's waiting on us. He knows we're going to go. He's there. He's going to wait. There he is. But we act in our lives as though he's not seeing this. He didn't hear that word. He didn't know my thought. That was an ugly thought, but he didn't know it. You may not even think that way. You may just go about your business and not even be stricken with the idea that that's not godly. That's acting like he don't know you. It was ungodly, and he does know. How do I know? Well, he sent his son to die for that. I guess he does know. He knows all about our sin. Some of the evil ones back in the Old Testament, that was one of the things some of them used to say, he don't see us. You think he's watching me? And these were like leaders in the, in the religious circles. And of course they were wrong as they could be. So we see these, uh, just looking at the verses there, this is one of Jesus' teachings I said he teaches it and he lives it. The peace teaches and lives the peace that he is. First of all, my sheep follow me. That right there, there's there's peace. <clears throat> the peace that's first known in salvation compels following after. Do we not follow our Lord and Savior once we're saved? The world does not follow Jesus because they don't know him. Those who know him follow him. What am I saying? Our life changes when we start to have a different life. We're following him instead of darkness and ourselves, which is darkness, right? We're following him. My sheep follow me. And he's, I know them. That's been said. I give them eternal life. That was said. They shall never perish. That's been said. Um, then he says here, man cannot undo this. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And he goes on the next verse and says, my father that's greater is all, then greater is, is greater than, who is greater than all has us. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. So we're in the, 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 our Savior Jesus' hand. We're in the Father's hand. We have absolute security this is much peace. This is much peace. The saved, the saved are the sheep of Christ's field. Such a perfect choice. Sheep, to call us sheep, it's a, it's a good choice for us. I won't do anything negative here. There's some negative stuff, but think about sheep. Harmless, inoffensive. They're meek, quiet, patient, altogether dependent upon their shepherd. They starve to death without a shepherd. They won't even, they won't go anywhere without a shepherd. And if they hear a voice they don't know, they will not come to that voice. They'll just come to their shepherd. What a wonderful idea, a wonderful comparison or use that his people that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ are his sheep. Think about this. All for a sheep and the shepherd, the protection of the sheep, all care of the sheep, food, water, um, 
every need that the sheep have taken care of by the shepherd, and they count on that care, correct? The sheep can count on that care, but they know that they're going to get that sheep. Um, any peace ever experienced is vitally connected to their shepherd. In other words, everything that they need in their life is always connected to the shepherd. Think of it. They cannot protect themselves. The shepherd does. The shepherd herds them into an enclosure at night when the dark falls. They, they can, couldn't get there by themselves. They don't know where the doorway is. The shepherd has to show them the, the way in. Yes. The food, the shepherd has to lead them to the food. The shepherd has to provide the water. So every need for their own peace is found in their shepherd. Think about that because we're talking about us. Every need that we have is found only in our shepherd. And we hear his voice and we follow him because he provides all that we need. And there's great peace there. He provides all. That's a great need, right? All is great. And he provides all of these needs. And so we follow him. I want you to think about this for us. Beside those needs that we just talked about, he's the light in the darkness. Isn't he? That was mentioned earlier. A guide on an unknown road. Yeah. We don't, we don't know which way to go. But he shows how. Here it is. Scripture. He's a shelter in the time of a storm. Mm -hmm. Cure for all hills. Peace. Talking again about peace that Jesus is mm -hmm. teaching here in those particular verses. Um, we can go on here with Ephesians 4. We see some verses here. Two verses. The end of verse chapter 4 and the beginning of chapter 5. Be kind-hearted one to another. tender heart. Giving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Be ye therefore followers of God, his dear children. Do you not see the settledness of that? There's peace there. Look, look at how it says to act. There's nothing in the world but peace. There, there's no clash. There's no beating on each other and, and having jealousies and and wanting to get ahead, and I want to be more powerful and more recognized. I want to be head of the class. It's you know, be kind, tender hearted, forgiving, just like Christ. So there's peace. He's teaching peace. There's peace being taught here in the Word of God. The word followers. Look at the word. They are for followers of God. Who knows what that word translates as? Some of you know it. My God, but you remember. Imitate. Imitators. Imitate. So read the word, read verse. Be ye therefore imitators of God. In other words, act like God. That don't mean that you're God. Act like him though. How? There it is. Tender heart, forgiving, be kind. The way that God treated you and me. Right? So he says, be imitators of God as dear children. In other words, as a kid is raised in his household, he should take on some characteristics of his parents. Now, let's just talk about the good characteristics, right? So the good stuff, there should be some good stuff from the parents. But there should be a resemblance, a strong resemblance in the children, between the children and the parent in their lives. In a good way, we're talking about. There's bad to it. We're talking about the good way. So that's what this is. There, there should be God likeness in us. Remember, to be conformed to the image of His dear Son. Right? There it is. The imitators of God. There it is. There's peace in that. Oh, what should, what should I do? Which way should I live? How should I be? God like. There's peace. Just His. The only non he should be there is, I, I'm just, I haven't gotten there yet. I need more. I need more. There should be something that drives us home because it's good. <clears throat> Jesus not only taught thoroughly the peace to be found exclusively in himself, he taught it thoroughly because there's many verses in Scripture where Jesus taught 
He doesn't use the word peace necessarily. But he talks about his way as opposed to the way you've always done, the world's way. His way. And it's always an assurance and a good thing. He not only thoroughly taught peace to be found exclusively in himself, but he also demonstrated that um, that city. He also demonstrated that same peace in his earthly life. He demonstrated that same peace in earthly life. Let's look at these. We can't spend much time, but let's see some things that Jesus said in his lifetime. And it tells about his actions also. Let's see what he says here. Then Jesus, this is John 8. 28 and 29. Then Jesus said unto them, Ye have lifted up the Son of Man. What does that mean? Crucified. Ye have lifted up the Son of Man. Then shall ye know that I am He, that I do nothing of myself. What happened? How did they know? The nature in which He died, that all turned dark. Do you remember that? And, and then you know three days later, do you know what happened? Right? Then you will know, you all that come to Wednesday night, you understand Quite some time ago, we talked about the importance of that resurrection. We're about to celebrate that, right? Easter coming up. Is that this? The power involved in that truth is God. End of story. Need nothing else to prove Jesus is God except the resurrection of Jesus from the grave. Nothing else needed. That's the power of God. Resurrection. When you have lifted up the Son of Man, that you shall know that I am He. That I do nothing of myself. So look, look at here. If Jesus is peace, what does he just say? I do nothing of myself. What's the, what's the whole point then? If he's the prince of peace, he does nothing of himself. Yes. Listen, that's an example for you and me. You want peace? The peace that's promised? I do nothing of myself, but as a father taught me. I speak these things, and he that sent me is with me. The Father let, let, let me alone, and this is so good to hear. For I do always those things that please him. Jesus sought that same peace. You understand that? Now I know he's, he's God, but he was also all man. And he was with all sinners and sin the first time in his life. They knew all about it, and he had never lived it as a man until he came. And all of that comes down upon him. Yes? And this is his way. I do nothing except what the Father says. And he's pleased with that, so he's with me. You see that the peace that Jesus found? Did Jesus need peace? What about in his crucifixion? He sweat, right? Blood. Yes, pray. If it's possible, can you take this cup from me? Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Yes, it was hard. He was a man. As God, he knew it was going to happen, but then to do it was great difficulty. Yet he looked forward to it because his father's will. It was the Father's will. And it pleased, it pleased, Jesus pleased the Father. Why? Because he did the Father's will. The peace that Jesus found was one thing. He did the Father's will. Peace is there. And look at this. You can hear Jesus in Luke 12, 50. Jesus says this, but I have a baptism to be baptized with. This is not open in the water. And how I am straightened to let me accomplish. Straightened is this what pressure is in my spirit to finish up what I'm here to do. Look, what was a baptized baptism to be baptized with? What was the what's he talking about? What does he have to go through? Why did he come? To die. Yes, cruel death, none crueler, no. Right? It was a Roman death. They invented it, I think. And then the, 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 the peeling off layers of 
wrinkled lips and plucking the beard, spinning, beating on him, mocking him, and, and people shaking their heads. Come down off there, your God. Save yourself. And all, all these things that are perfect. Look, the baptism. I have, and listen, I'm under great pressure. I need to accomplish that. Why? It was the Father's will. And it was the will of God. This is the plan of God. Listen, the plan of God would bring peace. Carry through with the plan of God that brings peace to Jesus. He's telling us there in his life show. Then look at the next verse. John 12, 27. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour. It says the same kind of thing, right? I did the same thing. In other words, I'm going to do what the Lord has for me to do. What God has for me to do because it pleases him. And we see that look the very last month. I do always those things that please him. Peace. This is the peace of God. We receive the peace of God mysteriously somehow. It's in the spirit in us. I know that. I believe that. By doing his will and pleasing the Father. And then look at this. One of my favorite verses in the whole Bible. Jesus in his last prayer that we know about to the Father just before his crucifixion. John 17, 4. I have glorified thee. He's, he's talking to the Father in prayer on the earth. I have finished. That's supposed to be thee. Um, I did this. She did I have finished the work thou gavest me to do. There is great peace in that. You read that prayer that talks about all these disciples. Keep them. I've kept them. You keep them by your word, Father. And I want them to be with me with the glory that I had with you since the foundation of the world. Not just them only, but those that will believe because of their word. So he's getting ready to leave Jesus, right? All of these things. And, but, but look, he's at peace. I've come to that time. Do you remember when Judas got up and left the supper? Judas Iscariot? In John 13, and, and, and Jesus said, Now am I glorified. For this cause came Jesus into the world to die for sinners. Now he gets to that place, and there's peace about it. Do you not see? Remember Saul? Same thing. I don't care for my life. I simply want to please the Father. Remember? And then he's at the end of his life, and he says, I'm going to enter into joy with, with this, and I'm going to receive a crown of righteousness. I've finished the work. Jesus, I've finished the work. Great peace, sent day by day. Do the work day by day. The prayer, the study, the meditation, the witnessing, being kind and loving, kind hearted. That's our place and that brings us. Lord, we thank you for the time together and these verses, a few that we've seen about the peace that comes from you simply by loving you enough to do your will and then just reveling in what you've done in our lives. Praise you. Thank you for all of the time.